third such attack in as many weeks. A shooting incident has resulted in the injury and loss of life of persons affiliated with the Jamaica Labour Party JLP. On Monday night, four persons who were part of a group of JLP election workers were shot, one fatally in the community of Canterbury in St. James. According to reports, a group of JLP Election Day workers were gathered in the community when a man alighted from a car and fired shots at the group. Four persons were shot, one of which later succumbed to injuries in hospital. Assistant Commissioner of Police in charge of Area 1, Winchroy Boudou, says the latest in this spate of incidents affecting JLP supporters is not politically motivated. What I can say at this time based on, the, on investigations and the intelligence is that it is not politically motivated and it has nothing at all to do with policy. All three incidents. Are, were, were not politically motivated. And uh, what I mean is that it was not a PNP uh, shooting up JLP. The first one in, in Samshaw Square took place in, 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 in the meeting, and the, f the, the nomination day, the motorcade that was shut up was also shut up in, 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 in the vicinity of where one of the deceased at Samshaw Square resides. Um, this incident, uh, a, a particular individual was in the vicinity who is a known gang leader and who is in conflict with other persons within the community. And a matter of fact, he's also reporting on condition of bail. And one of the conditions is that he should not have been in that area. And he was the target. Unfortunately, some other persons were injured, one of which succumbed today. Persons in the community and surrounding areas are in fear that this shooting will spur reprisals. ACP Boudou says police presence will be intensified in the area to prevent this from happening. We have intensified our presence. We have, we have put in additional police presence in the area and it will be so going forward. And we are conducting our investigations with a view of finding those responsible for, for the, the crime. We will have foot and mobile patrol inside that space uh, to prevent uh, reprisals. But you are to also note the area is wide and it, it's going to be very difficult to really police all the areas. But we, as much as possible, we are going to be preventing persons from coming inside the area because the, pers the, the perpetrators, for instance, last night, uh, we believe that they are not living in that general space. And the, the target is basically, I, uh, my information is at station at this time. And I mean the person who was the target last night. Still on the political scene, the Jamaica Labour Party JLP pulled out all the stops on Sunday to secure votes ahead of Thursday's elections. Party leader Andrew Holness pulled no punches as he pointed out the shortcomings of the Portia Simpson Miller administration over the last four years. Leslie Sherwood tells us more. Jamaica Labour Party leader Andrew Holness says his party is the only way to move the country from poverty to prosperity. Speaking on Sunday at the party's last mass rally before the February 25 general elections, Holness says it amazes him that the People's National Party, PNP, is so versed to his party's plans to remove personal income tax. I have a plan to grow the economy. We have listed the 10 points, but the one that gives the PNP heart attack every time people talk about it is 1.5. He cited instances where he says the People's National Party has failed. For instance, the party's decision to not follow through on the JLP's existing deal with lending agency, the International Monetary Fund, IMF, in 2011. They had six months remaining on the IMF deal that we left there. Six months. In that six months, they could have continued with the old IMF program, as we had planned to do, implement tax reform, continue with the divestment program, and implement the growth-inducing strategy which we asked the PIOJ to develop. Instead, they did nothing for six months. And in that six months, the dollar shot up to almost 100. Our reserves plummeted to below a billion dollars. And then they say that we 
were the cause of the instability of the Jamaican economy. Lie them telling. Lie them telling. What they did was to allow the six months to run off and then say they have no IMF deal and then talk about them trying to negotiate the best deal. But the deal where them get cost you $52 billion or more in new taxes since they have been the government. You are $52 billion poorer because Peter Phillips never followed through on the existing IMF program. Mr. Holness says he's still waiting on the PNP's Jeep to take effect. Four years ago, they promised Jeep as a solution to unemployment. Ono City Jeep. News flash, the Jeep crash. Oh, no, no, sorry. Sorry, I know I misread the news flash. Bad gas broke down the Jeep. He also lambasted the finance minister for what he says are untruths about the future of job security in the country. They promised that there would be no job cuts. They promised. No job cuts when they take over. The IMF warned them and tell them, if you don't grow the country, then you will have to take undesirable measures. The permanent secretary, or what we call them, the financial secretary in the Ministry of Finance, gave a little hint that there would be job cuts coming. The minister him jumping at the same time and said, no, no job cuts. The head of EPOC, their oversight committee, give a hint, job cuts coming. Him run the parliament the next day and say, no, no job cuts. Recently, some journalists back him up and him say, well, we're going to reorganize the, the public sector and yes, there might be some job cuts, but I don't know how much. The JLP leader says that the PNP continues to show their disregard for the Jamaican people and it's time for the people to take a stand. They have reduced our democracy. They have disrespected you. They have said to you that they don't need to tell you anything for you to vote for them because as far as they are concerned, they own you and they own Jamaica. So they can disrespect you any way they want. But we know better, and they should be punished for that disrespect. So come the 25th, I want you to give them a whipping for that disrespect. Come the 25th, come out in your numbers, well-thinking Jamaicans, and show the PNP that they cannot take your views and your vote for granted. They must respect the democracy and if they talk about people power they must respect the power of the people and you must come out and show them that you have power to change them i'm leslie and showed for scene caribbean news the 2016 national leadership debates between the People's National Party and the Jamaica Labour Party did not take place as expected. The PNP called off the debates, citing the need for more information on the funds being used to build the JLP leader Andrew Holness's house in Beverly Hills, St. Andrew. The JLP Southwest St. Elizabeth candidate Floyd Green took offence to the PNP stance since they have refused to discuss several issues that he says the Jamaican people want answered. This government cannot bring the change. This government does not understand the change that we need. This government lacks ideas. This government lacks vision. You ask them what have they done? Them say look for Andrew House. You ask them what they plan for do? Them say look for Andrew House. You ask them how so much people so poor? Them say look for Andrew House. Bad mind, I'm going to kill them over Andrew House. Local. 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 
The Electoral Office of Jamaica, EOJ, is reporting that there was a 63% voter turnout among special services workers who cast their ballots on Monday. Police officers, the military and election day workers exercised their franchise on Monday, three days before the rest of the country goes to the polls on Thursday. According to the figures from the EOJ, there was a slight decline in voter turnout this year when compared to the 2011 general election. In 2011, voter turnout among special services personnel was 68%. Of the 39,108 special services workers who were eligible to vote on Monday, only 24,721 persons voted. Based on the EOJ's official breakdown, 70% of Election Day workers cast their ballots on Monday compared to 746 in the 2011 general polls. There was a 3% decline among the military and police. Director of Elections, Orette Fisher, says Monday's proceedings went smoothly. He says polls are opened on time at 8 a.m. Mr. Fisher says the EOJ hasn't received any reports of any incidences. CARICOM will be sending an electoral observation mission to monitor the general elections to be held in Jamaica on Thursday. The mission is being headed by Josephine Tamay, Chief Elections Officer of the Elections and Boundaries Department in Belize. The team arrived on Sunday and will depart on February 27. The mission includes experts in electoral management and administration from Barbados, the Bahamas, Dominica, St. Lucia, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Trinidad and Tobago. Meanwhile, head of mission for the Organization of American States, OAS, Janet Bostwick, has expressed satisfaction with Jamaica's voting process. Bostwick told reporters that Jamaica is far advanced in its preparations to improve the way elections are conducted. She also commended the implementation of recommendations made by previous teams who were in the country to observe the general elections of 2007 and 2011.